gospel lesson for the Sundays found in the book of John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the living bread that comes from heaven. Anyone who eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I give for the life of the world is also my flesh. Then the Jews began to argue with one another, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat and drink of his blood? So Jesus said, Truly I say to you, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, you, will, you have no life in yourselves. The one who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood will have eternal life, and I will raise him up on that last day. For my flesh is true food, my blood is true drink. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, the one who eats of me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. For the one who eats of this bread will live forever. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Heavenly Father, bless us with this word today, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a uh, reminder again, we are in the season of giving of our food. We're in the, uh, the statements about Jesus, the bread of life, during the month of August. It's a great opportunity for us to do a collection, an offering, a food offering, that we then, in turn, give to people who are in need as a sign of Jesus' love for them. That Jesus blesses us with materialistic food as a sign of his eternal blessing that he wants to give us. And so, I, if you would like to continue participating with that, I invite you every single Sunday to bring a canned good with you to worship. For those at home that do not, uh, do not have the opportunity or privilege to worship with us, uh, this is the only time I'm asking you for giving a financial offering to the church. I will never ask you to give financially to support the mission of this church, with exception when we are giving something away to people who are in need, and we want to multiply that giving. So I am outright telling you, if you send us a check for $10, $20, $30, $100, $1,000, and I've had people who've done that, who've given us a check for $1,000 to feed the poor, and you put in your memo, food offering, or for community outreach, I promise you this, we will spend 100 cents of every single dollar of that in the feeding of the poor in this community. It won't go to my salary, it doesn't go to the building, it goes, to, again, directly to the outreach as a sign of Jesus' love for them. So let's take a look at our lesson for today in these I am statements, I am the bread of life statement of Jesus. Remember how last week we said that I am statement indicates that Jesus was making, claiming an affinity with God. Remember in the Old Testament when Moses asked who it was who was sending men to preach uh, deliverance uh, of the Jews from slavery in Egypt. God said, tell them I am sent you. Now this is a really interesting phrase in Greek. And I'm going to tell you why. John actually uses it as an emphatic. What do I mean that? I am phrase is emphatic in Greek. In Greek, a verb actually contains the noun, the subject in it. You don't have to state the subject. So that's kind of odd in English, uh, but uh, because our, we, 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 are, we require that you fill in the... Uh, with the noun, you put the subject there, the noun that's doing the action, right? Or the, is, the, is in the case of I am statement uh, that, that uh, develops that verb, okay? So, but in Greek, what Jesus does is he uses both the noun I and the word am also contains who it is who's making the statement. That means it's an emphatic. So in Greek, as I said, verbs have both a person have a personal ending. So the per personal pronoun I is unnecessary. But John uses not only the singular ending of the verb, but the personal pronoun as well in the reporting of Jesus' words, which means that this is an emphatic statement. We are meant to associate the phrase I am with Jesus. So it's like saying, I am. Jesus isn't just saying, I am. Jesus is saying, I am, okay, emphatically. He's making sure that we, it is not lost on us, 
that we associate Jesus with the one who makes that statement to Moses. Tell them I am is the one who sent you. Okay. It's tough to explain Greek uh, language to those who are not familiar with, but I hope that makes some sense. But Jesus goes on. He says that his source of authority in this world comes from above. He is not from these parts here, parts on this earth. He is not an earthly authority. His authority doesn't come from humans. It doesn't come from the synagogue. It doesn't come even from a study of scripture. It comes directly from heaven itself. He has the pure, undulterated truth and new life. Does this remind us of something from John 3? What did, did you remember John 3? Jesus talking to Nicodemus and said that for you to have new life, you must be born again. And that is a gift from above. You must be born from above. He's again affiliating salvation with something that comes from heaven. He's affiliating himself with something that comes from heaven. So again, born again is more accurately translated born from above. And it fits better with John's intention to demonstrate the origin of Jesus' authority. It is not from this world and it's not something that you or I do. It is a gift of God. So when Jesus is talking about this bread that he wants to offer to us, this blood that he wants to offer to us, it is for everyone, not people who fulfill certain requirements, not just a chosen few. And this generation, just ge this, uh, this generous offering is at odds with all those who are religious in their orientation, especially religious leaders who want to control who Jesus can be offered to. And so these religious leaders began to quarrel amongst themselves. They're thinking, after all, literalistically about this bread. They're thinking, can Jesus really cut a piece of flesh off of himself and offer it to everybody? I don't know how that's going to happen. Doesn't make sense to me. But this is what Jesus tried to remind us of. And this is your Sunday reminder today and your good news this morning. What Jesus is telling us, he's making a claim that he is to be your life, your sufficiency. By eating of this gift of Jesus Christ, by consuming his love for us, we free up our eternity to live with God. A relationship that begins now and continues on into the kingdom to come. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks again for this gift of Jesus that frees up our eternity. It's a gift. It's not something we do. It's not words that we've said. It's not a salvation moment. It's a salvation process in which Jesus picks us up in his life raft and rows us to shore safely so we can be with God for an eternity. Bless us with this feast today, the feast of your love, for he asks us all in Jesus' name. Amen.